Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be looking at the AI Power FX functions that have just come out and that you can use in your apps today. We're going to be looking at AI Summarize, AI Sentiment and AI Reply and see how you can bring them into your apps. So let's start by looking at this app that I made earlier on. And we're going to look at the film Aladdin. We've got a little summary of the film here. So in the product description, it says, soar away on a magic carpet ride of non-stop laughs and thrills, and then goes on to describe the film. So let's try and summarize this text. Select summarize text. And as you can see, the text is a bit shorter but not maybe as short as you might think it would be. But bear in mind, the product description is actually pretty summary already. So let's go back and have a look at some different text. Let's just move that. And we're going to look at the model driven apps documentation. So I'm going to select that. Now, if you haven't done so already, please like and subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon to be notified of any new videos that come along. So it's just an overview of what model driven apps are. So it's a bit of a technical document here and it's text length is 1024 words. So let's see how big this comes out as. Select summarize text. And the text is quite a bit shorter. You know, if we were looking at the number of pages, we maybe got about say five pages on the left hand side. Uh, on the right hand side, we've got maybe two. And we can also look at the sentiment of this document here. I'm going to select identify sentiment. And it's saying that it's neutral and it's a technical document, so it should be pretty impartial. Let's head back a little bit further, have a look at something else. Let's look at this eclipse. This is a news article to do with eclipse that's going to take place in the USA. It's got a thousand six words. And I'm going to summarize the text here. Now, as you can see, the text is an awful lot shorter. So how are we going to build an app that makes this work? Well, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to drop out of here and we're going to select the back option. We're going to leave the app. We're going to build an app from scratch because there are some tricks that you need to be aware of. I'm going to select new app canvas app. I'm going to call it Demo Power FX AI. So we're building this from blank. Now, the first thing that we need to do is we need to select on data. And we need to go to add data. And then we need to select environment. Because if we don't do this, we won't have the functions that we need to be able to use within our app. I'm going to select on environment. And I'm also going to do one more thing, and that's because uh, we're going to bring in a template view and I want to make sure it's responsive. So I'm going to select the three dots, go to the settings and then go to the display and I'm going to turn off scale to fit. It won't be so obvious to begin with, but if you are using some of these new templates, then you do need to make sure that you turn it off. Now I'm going to select on the templates, just make a bit more space for ourselves here and make this a little bit bigger. Select on the templates and I'm going to go for the split screen here. We're going to look at the tree view. Now I'm pretty happy with that. I'm going to collapse that down a bit so I've got a bit more room. And you can see that we've got a horizontal container and we've got two vertical containers. So what we're going to do with that is on the left container, that's where our text is going to go and we're going to do our insert and we're going to bring in our text input and then select text input. 
Now do bear in mind that I'm in a preview environment at the moment and for that reason some of the things are actually switched on by default that will be coming to everyone very soon but if you go to settings if you don't see the option for modern there you just need to go to the settings onto the general scroll down and then you'd select on or off the modern controls and themes we want it to be on uh, I'm going to come out of there and I've got my text input uh, I'm going to make it full width and I'm going to make it also flexible height. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to insert and I'm going to bring in a button and we're going to make it full width. I'm going to change the text to summarize text. Then on the right hand side we're going to bring in a text box and we'll select insert and we'll type in text. We're using all modern controls here. Select text. I'm going to make it full width and also make it flexible height. Then what I'm going to do is make sure that the vertical align is set to top. And then what we're going to do is we're going to then start using these AI functions. So on the summarized text bit now, I'm going to slow down a little bit here and I'm going to go on to the on select property of the button. And we're going to write out a formula that's a little bit on the complicated side, but the first thing we're going to do is we're going to use set. That's going to create a global variable for us. We can name as we wish, but I'm just going to call it GBL summarize. I could call it anything. So it's now looking for us to tell it what that variable is going to be. So what we now need to do is we need to enter environment. And then we need to do dot and then type in AI. Now we're going to get the functions that we need in order to be able to use the AI. And I'm going to select AI summarize. And then I'm going to open the brackets so that we can actually start supplying in the variables. And it's actually looking for a record. So we're going to do the curly brackets. And then specifically, we need to type in text. This is just something that we have to do here. And what we're going to do is we're going to use the text from our text input canvas one. I'm not going to change the name of it because it will be the same name that you have. So I'm going to type in input because I know that's going to give me that. I'm going to select on that and we want the text property. Actually, it's not the text property because this is a modern control. So I'm going to select dot and it will be dot value. I'm going to close the curly brackets and then close parentheses as well. But we're not quite done there because we've supplied in the variables, but we haven't actually told it what to give us back. So we need to select the dot and then we need to select a summarized text. And we're still not quite done because we haven't closed the parentheses on the uh, on the variable here. So I'm going to select the parentheses and then we're all good. And if you want this to look a bit easier to review, you can select the drop down here and select format text. It's a slightly easier to see. Um, and you can see that we initially set the variable as GBL summarize. And then we've got this long string of text that allows us to bring in the summarized text. So what we need to do now is once we've got that working, we're going to use that within our text on the right hand side. So what I'm going to do now is select on that. And what we're going to have in here is going to be GBL and it's going to be GBL summarize. And that's all that we need to get this thing working. So let's try this out. I'm going to go and find some text. I'm going to put it in there. I'm going to move over to the preview option and I'm going to paste in the text here. It's not quite looking how we want it to look at the moment. And that's because I haven't set the properties correctly on the text input. So the mode is single line and I want to make it multi-line. And now you can see that you rendered this correctly. I'm going to change the style and theme as well. I'm going to make the font size a bit bigger. Let's make that something like 20. And this is an article about the changing kit for the England football kit really important but I kind of chose this one because it had a bit of negativity in there as well so what I wanted to do is select the preview the app option 
you can see that it's you know maybe about three pages long so to speak and I'm going to select on summarize text and as soon as I do that it's going to go away and it's actually going to run the AI for us click on summarize text and you can see across the top it's actually doing the exercise for us and it's now on the right hand side it's done this summary and as you can see it's done a pretty good job what you will note, it doesn't actually do anything like paragraphs or anything like that. So if we were to try and do the same exercise in ChatGPT, you'd probably find that you actually get a, a, a better response from it. But this is just completely out of the box and free for you. I think this is a very, very good offering. But let's go and have a look and see what ChatGPT would do the same thing. OK, I'm going to copy this lot here and we'll move over to ChatGPT. So we're in ChatGPT, let's see what ChatGPT comes up with. I have got entered the same information and I'm going to send the message. And as you can see, ChatGPT has done a different job. They've actually split it into paragraphs and it is a summary. You know, it's it's not as long as the original document and um, it's got quite a nice layout. Uh, and you can see that if you use more advanced tools, you're going to get different levels of responses. Moving back to Power Apps, and I'm pretty happy that what we've been able to do with such a small amount of code has given quite a bit of value. And I could see myself using it for things like emails and so on, or you know, responses within documents. You can see yourself using that uh, quite easily. Now we're not quite finished here because we want to do two more things. We want to use AI reply and we also want to use the sentiment piece as well. So let's go and add those elements in. That's the summarize text option there. I'm going to do insert button and I'm going to make it go full width. I'm going to change this to be sentiment. And down the bottom here, I'm going to go insert and I'm going to put in text. And I'm going to make sure it actually starts with sentiment. Do some colons and then enter. Then I'm going to make it go full width. And I'm also going to make sure that it's got some kind of flexible height pop that in there. It's actually going to change the, you know, the dimensions here, but I'm okay with that. I'm going to make the vertical line and make it top as well. So let's see if we can freestyle the button here and go on to the text and we're going to go on to the on select. On select. And we're going to say set GBL and we're going to use the sentiment. What are we going to make it? We're going to make it environment dot AI and it's going to be sentiment. What is going to be the sentiment of? Open the brackets there. It's going to be some text and it's going to be input so text input canvas one dot value, select value, and then close the curly brackets first, close the parentheses, and then select a dot. And we've got the analyzed sentiment and then close the brackets. So what we can now do is we can select the play option and then select sentiment, but nothing's going to happen yet. And that's because we haven't said where it needs to go. So we'll select the X there. And then on this sentiment here, we can then go down to the bottom and then do ampersand and then we'll do sentiment, GBL sentiment. And then we we'll can see that actually the sentiment here is actually negative. So do the same thing, but we'll do it for the review of the Aladdin film. So this time round, we're going to do the summarized text of the Aladdin film. We did this before, and then we're going to select on the sentiment as well. And you can see this time round, the sentiment is positive. Now, the key thing about this sentiment is actually that you only really get positive, negative or neutral. So you've got some really 
a small number of options, whereas in other scenarios you might have actually a value between 0 and 1 to indicate the sentiment that you're getting out of your text. Now before we finish up, we're going to do one more thing. We're going to add in the reply option. And I think this is one of the more interesting ones because it's actually a really good start point for a reply. So let's give it a go. I'm going to select the X here and I'm going to go down to the bottom. I'm going to insert a button. In fact, I'm going to copy paste this button here. I'm going to do control C, control V. And this time I'm going to say reply. I'm going to show you one of the little gotchas that you might have if you're using this. If I go onto the on select, you can see that we've got set GB sentiment. So we might say, might as well say set GPL reply. What are we going to make it? Well, it's going to be environment.ai and it's AI reply is the one that we want. But notice as soon as you've done that, it's actually got it in twice. So you'll actually have to remove it. Well, that's going to work OK, but the output of AI reply is not analyzed sentiment. So I'm going to remove that, select the dot and then do prepared response. And then I need to close the parentheses as well. What I'm now going to do is I'm going to remove this. Um, I'll, I'll keep this uh, sentiment in and I am going to do a copy and paste on this text canvas. Control C, Control V. Uh, I'm also going to hide this one, which has got the sentiment. Uh, so I'm just going to turn off the visibility. And what I'm going to do is in this sentiment here, I'm going to change the text. and It's going to be response to customer. And it's going to be GBL. And it's going to be reply. So it would be a slightly odd reply if it was to uh, something to do with Aladdin, but we could give it a go now that the text is here. But I have actually prepared a complaint that someone's made as well. So I'm going to select the preview. I'm going to select reply. And as you can see, it's actually quite a nice reply that they've given. But let's try it out with something different. Let's try it out with an actual complaint. So on the left hand side, we've just got a fairly generic complaint where someone's purchased a phone, they're not very happy with it. So we've got, you know, an opportunity to say something about it. And we can do our summarized text option here, summarize text. And you can see that there's a summary of what the issue is here. And then what we're also going to do is we could do the sentiment, but we've actually hidden that now. And so now we can actually select reply. We've actually got quite a good reply here. Dear Alex Grantham, thank you for reaching out to the fond supporting. We sincerely apologize for the frustration disappointment you've received when, uh, with your recent Fonz 15 purchase. We understand the reports of a reliable device and so on and so forth. I think it's actually quite interesting, this piece here where it says, rest assured we're committing to resolve this matter promptly. Our team will thoroughly investigate your case and work towards finding a factory response. We will get back to you as soon as possible with a proposed solution, which may include a replacement device or a refund. And that's the bit you've got to be careful with, because, you know, what if that's not your company policy? It just shows you that you can use AI and that's fine, but you do need a human in the middle to be able to to look at those responses that have gone out uh, or that are due to go out so that we're not over committing our organization. Well, I don't know about you, but I can see myself using this and I can see it's going to be really interesting to see how this is going to develop over time. There are other functions available. We've got extract and we've also got AI classify and those are ones that we're going to pick up in future videos. We've also got AI translate, which could be really, really interesting. Well, I don't know about you, but I'm actually pretty happy about how we can start using AI within our apps and how simple it is to bring in. You could certainly think of an app where it actually looks at your emails and you actually select summarize and it would actually do that. Clearly within the likes of Microsoft 365 Copilot, you're going to get that functionality. But this is out of the box. So this is really, really neat. So stay tuned for more updates on using PowerFX AI functions. 
I think there's much further for them to go, and I'm really excited to see what happens. See you again soon.